So Zach, we're here today at Carter K State Park and you're here to do a bat survey. Today we're gonna go in and just get an idea of the population of bats that we have in this cave. And this is something we do about every other year. And we've done this for about the last 30 years now. So we've got a good trend to see what our bat population is doing with each species. That's become even more important now that we have white nose syndrome, which is a fungus that's impacting a lot of the bat population throughout the eastern US. Uh, we'll be able to tell what percent decline that we're getting in our population by each species. Because of white nose syndrome, there's a lot of precautions that, that, that you take when entering and exiting these type of caves, right? Exactly, what we don't want to do is uh, in an effort to try to protect the bats, end up causing them more harm. So one of the things that we'll do today is we'll decontaminate every bit of equipment that goes into the cave. Before it enters into a vehicle, we'll wipe it all down with Clorox wipes. That'll kill the fungal spores that cause white nose syndrome. We'll change our clothes and all these clothes will be decontaminated before they go into another cave later. What other type of precautions do you have to take to handle bats, either for you and for the bats? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, number one, before you touch a bat or handle a bat, you need to have your pre-exposure rabies vaccination. So both me and Michaela, we've already had our vaccination, so we won't get rabies, which is pretty important to both of us. <laughs> the other thing we're gonna do is we'll be taking some swabs today that'll be used for a uh, genetic study on white nose syndrome so that we're not cross-contaminating between bats. We'll have on latex gloves and we'll switch gloves before we handle each bat. Okay. okay. So what we'll do at this point is we can have everybody shut their lights off for a second mm -hmm. and we'll use the UV light. So if it has uh, white nose syndrome, there'll be this fluorescing orange lesions on its wings, which we're not seeing. That's, good. That's a good thing. So this one at least visually looks relatively clean. But what we'll do, you can turn your lights back on. We'll have Michaela take a sterile swab and then be able to send that off for analysis. As far as the wing spread goes, this would be bigger than a lot of our common birds we have, like a cardinal or whatever, this would be probably a little bigger. The wingspan on them is a pretty good size. The interesting thing is, if you want to look at the mass of it, mm -hmm. it weighs a little bit more than a nickel. That entire bat, you're saying weighs a little bit more than a nickel. Yeah, a nickel it weighs a little bit over five grams, and right now this weighs about six grams. And on an average night, how many bugs could this thing anticipate eating in a night? Oh, hundreds. Okay. All right, let's move on. One little brown, two Indianas, plus 22, plus 26, plus 18, plus 17. That's awesome. Look at that. There's another crevice right here that is completely packed with Indiana bats. Yeah. Indiana bats. 75. And they're all the way up through this crack, packed in there. I mean, there's probably well over 100 in here. Now check this cluster of bats here out. This is very typical. It looks like it's probably about 20 of them just stacked in there. There's uh, 65 in that little crack. 65 bats in yep. this crack. Michaela, it's interesting. You go to school for environmental science and there's a million things you can study and ends up bats. What is it about bats that fascinates you? So bats are really fascinating animals. They're not something that you get to see every day. You don't see them flying around outside during the middle of the day or in the summer. They're active at night. They hibernate in caves. They're the only mammal that has true flight. They also face a lot of challenges between white nose syndrome. Several of them in Kentucky are on the Federally Endangered Species Act. Um, and so it's really important that we research these animals, we monitor them, and that's really just the combination of things that attracted me to study bats. It's a really, really interesting environment when you get into a cave, but you know, for a young woman, it's, it's, it's kind of cold and it's damp and you got these big <laughs> spiders climbing around all over the place and, and bats, 
they, they get this bad rap. You got this little rat-like creature with <laughs> teeth and moving around. And for you to go, you know what? That's me. That's what I, that's what I want to be involved with. It's really interesting. And I, yeah. I'm sure that once you got involved in it, you never looked back and regretted a minute of it, I bet, have you? Yeah, I mean, days like this and coming to get out here and survey bats in caves, that's that's really exciting for me. And I, oh, absolutely yeah. Absolutely. Well, I can understand <laughs> why you enjoy it because this is just such a cool place to be mm -hmm. in a cave. I mean, absolutely. but we got to be careful to tell people you, you don't want to be going in and out of caves. And mm -hmm. it can be really, really bad for these species, and some of which are endangered. It can be highly illegal as well, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. And these are sensitive environments, especially in the wintertime when we have hibernating bats. You want to make sure that you have permission to go into any cave you're going into, and preferably in the summer. A lot of the species you study, um, even though we don't hunt and fish for these species throughout the state of Kentucky, they're indicator species of overall environmental health, right? Right, absolutely. I mean, everything you see in here is uh, part of a big puzzle that goes together. It's like uh, that game Jenga that you play. You know, you can start removing one block here and there, but at some point, you remove too many blocks and the whole thing crumbles. Mm -hmm. Well, you may be focused on deer, turkey, and smallmouth, and those are wonderful things to go out and hunt and fish for, but they all work together. And when you start losing some species, uh, you can have an impact that carries over to other species down the way. Well, I appreciate the work that you're doing, and it's a great job you got. It's yeah. interesting work. I agree. Let's, let's go find a son. All right. <laughs>